Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Michael Bartnick from Software Solutions Group. Today we'll be going over project accounting for Microsoft Dynamics GP. Let's start off with a couple of key concepts. GP's project accounting is organized in a hierarchy with customers at the top from receivables management, followed by contracts from project accounting, then we have our projects, and lastly our budgets, or they're also referred to as cost categories in GP. So we can have as many contracts per customer record as we need. We can also have as many projects per contract as we need as well. This ends up allowing us to have multiple contracts per customer with varying amounts of projects per contract. This structure allows GP to be very flexible in project accounting and fit most business requirements. We find sometimes there are scenarios where we don't need that additional level of contract and the project and contract might represent the same thing or the contract and customer might represent the same thing. What we end up with is a more linear looking structure like we see on the screen now. Lastly, we have our budgets or cost categories. We can budget things like labor, supplies, employee expenses like travel, anything we want to charge or track against the project, we can create a cost category for. When we create our projects, we can choose from one of three different project types, and we can use all three different project types on uh, different projects in the system at the same time. The first project type of time and materials, these are going to be projects we don't have a fixed price for. We're going to be billing the customer directly for the costs that are incurred on the project. So the billings we uh, the we invoice them for um, will be either using a billing a specific billing rate or marking up the cost as they're incurred on the project. The next type of project are fixed price type projects where we have a predetermined contracted price that says this project grand total price is going to be a hundred thousand dollars that's what we're charging you. As costs are incurred on the project over the lifetime of the project um, they'll Get in, we'll invoice the customer for a percentage of, of the project price and our project margins will decrease as we incur those costs. So it'll be very important to budget these ones effectively uh, to manage our profit margins. Lastly we have cost plus type projects where a customer is going to pay for the actual project cost plus some fee so we'll end up with a, a project margin that's remaining constant. The costs that are incurred on the project can come from a couple of different, uh, a handful of different areas. Project accounting works with purchase order processing. So when we install project accounting, you end up having additional project number and cost category fields on your purchase order entry screens. So you can see on the screen now we have a project number and cost category ID. Um, so this purchase of inventory items will get charged against our project. We can also use non-inventory items on projects as well. Project accounting also installs its own transactions, so it adds timesheets. So we can use timesheet entry to record labor against a job. If we're using payroll in GP, those timesheets can also update our GP's payroll. The next transaction type is employee expenses, so we can record employees expenses against a project and just like t uh, also timesheets and employee expenses can be used with GP's workflow to create an approval process. The next type of equipment log allows us to track the, and record the usage of our equipment and then charge that usage to our project and, and bill our customers for that equipment usage. Miscellaneous log entries are going to be transactions are going to be for recording costs that we couldn't record using one of the other transaction types. It's kind of a catch-all. Um, the easiest way to think about it is there's sort of like a journal entry for project accounting. Project accounting flows to the general ledger but only in one direction. If you were to make a journal entry to a project general ledger, general ledger account, that's not going to go back and update your project card. So Everything that you put in to, to hit your project accounting needs to come in through the project accounting subledger or through purchase order processing. So that miscellaneous log allows you to capture costs that you couldn't use, use one of the other transactions for. Lastly, we have inventory transfers. 
so we can record the cost of inventory that gets transferred to or from a project. While we're on the subject of the general ledger, the posting accounts that are used in project accounting, we can default them per transaction type. So a miscellaneous log versus a timesheet versus an equipment log can all have different default posting accounts. Also, our time and materials and our fixed price slash cost plus accounts will be different. So we'll have a different set of default accounts for time and materials type projects versus fixed price type projects. Even if they're using the same budget cost categories, they can have uh, different sets of account GL accounts. The default account source, what drives the GL account number, where that's set up, it could be, we could just set up none and it gets filled in every time on the transaction or it could be driven from the customer, it could be driven from the contract, the project, the cost category, a transaction owner, or a specific GL account. Now let's jump into GP. I'm in project accounting, and I'm going to cards, project, I'm going to open up the hotel ledger project, which is a time and materials type project. The first thing that I'm going to point out right away is we can see that hierarchy with our customer, our contract, and our project. Our project type is grayed out because once we select a project type for a project, it's set in stone. One other field I'd like to point out on the screen is the accounting method. So the accounting method and project type work together to determine how GP is going to create your general, general ledger transactions and recognize revenue. I'd like to drill in now into our budget on the project. So this is the budget for this specific project. You can see I have multiple cost categories assigned to it for different budget categories. And the total budget cost is going to be our unit cost times our budgeted quantity, which I can drill into my budgeted quantity for consulting here and see that I have a, a opportunity to put in a period by period budget quantity. And I have a baseline budget. So when I first create my project in an estimate stage, I can put it, everything is going to fall into my baseline budget. Then when I open up my project, all changes to my budget are going to go to a forecast budget. You can see right here, which I can update the forecast on the screen, or I could use a change order type transaction to get approval on changes to the budget. Lastly, you'll see I have an actual panel over here to compare the actual quantity, cost, and billings to what I budgeted. So I'm going to hit OK to close out of the project. And let's go and record some labor against that project, some labor time. So I'm going to go back into project. I'm in transactions and timesheet entry. It auto numbers with the next timesheet. I'll, I'll just use my initials for my batch ID. My employee, I'm going to use Adam Barr. I'm going to grab that same hotel ledger project and I'll say that Adam was working on some project management and he spent three hours on project management. If I expand my details I can see that the unit of measure was hiding and it extends out my total cost. I could go on and continue to add additional lines to this timesheet for Adam or I could also go up to the top and select an item note to add a billing note, time spent on for Adam Park, which can appear on the billing invoice from project accounting that I send to my customer. I'm going to save my timesheet, go to my batch, and post my batch. It's going to prompt me for what payroll batch to add it to. And I'm going to just cancel out of my payroll or posting journals. So now I have some cost recorded against my project. This is a time and materials type project and I want to bill that cost to my customer. So I'm going to go back in my transactions to billing, go to billing entry. It's going to auto number my next billing document for me. I'll select my initials for this batch ID as well. My customer was Adam Park. I'll tab down to my project details and I want to grab the hotel ledger project. 
when I click the blue expansion button, when I have the, the project highlighted, it opens up the time and materials billing window for me. So I can see there's a handful of costs that I could bill to the prod, bill to this customer. And I want to uh, bill the management time spent by Adam. And if I expand my details, it shows you that I can change the billing rate, I can mark up the cost, I could write it up, write it down. I'm just going to bill it straight through for now. So I'll hit OK. You'll see it updated the billings column on the screen for me. I could continue to add additional projects or additional costs to this, to this billing entry if I wanted to. For today, I'm just going to print off the billing invoice and I'll save my changes. Now, GP's project accounting comes with dozens of pre-built invoice formats and you can combine some of the, the invoice formats to create a billing package. So I'm just using what's defaulted out of the system not in my sample company now. So it's going to print off several pages for me. So I'll just highlight some of the important ones when it prints up. So it's going to first print a summary page. So it shows me the, the total amount that I'm billing the customer. And I have a couple more pages that are going to come in. And I get to a detail page. And you see that detail page has the individual cost line for that time that I just billed for Adam that has that billing comment that he added back on the time card entry screen. I'm going to close out of the rest of the detail pages and I'm going to just go to my batch and post save and post this billing entry and just skip over my posting journals for now. So that billing just updated my project card and also uh, updated my general ledger and created a receivable in receivables management for that customer. Now if I wanted to inquire or do reporting on project information, I can use any of the pre-built inquiry screens in project accounting. I can also use any of the SSRS reports that are used for tracking actual versus budget and tracking bu um, project performance um, for getting more detailed project information than strictly just using the general ledger. So again, I'd like to thank you for joining me. Please feel free to check out more of our, more of our videos at www.softsolgrp.com.